tears streamed from her eyes as the headmistress finally awoke. Huh? She lifted up her, up just her head and looked around the room in confusion. The moment her gaze fell on Ayaka san, her expression froze. Tomiya san! Tomiya san! Eh? What? Some sort of light appeared in the headmistress's eyes. Fear? But it dis but it disappeared again immediately. What on earth happened? She sat up to realize she was laying down on her home couch. She said it was anemia. Anemia? I see. Are you all right? Yes, I think that I am fine. The headmistress folded up the blanket and sat down properly on the sofa. Aikasan spoke, her expression pointed. Mother, about what we were talking about. What we were talking about? <sighs> Erika-san sighed. The response didn't sound fake to me either. What is this? She touched the corners of her eyes and stared at her fingertips. She stared in disbelief for a moment as she realized they were tears. Mother, you were crying. <laughs> I think I'll be going for today, Mother. For today? <laughs> Let's go. At her urging, Ritsuka chan and I stood up. But wait a minute. Uh, Ayaka san. What is it? No, it's nothing. Excuse me. That night, Ayaka-san and Rutsuko-chan came to my room. I was a little shocked. I didn't think she'd just pass out like that. Eh, <laughs> Yes, but that sort of thing happens to Mother from time to time. I wasn't expecting her to wake up immediately. Yeah, but if she won't listen to you, I wonder how we can get your point through to her. Erika's yeah, real mother had ignored her feelings for almost 20 years. We had to put a stop to it as soon as possible. I wonder what mother wants in the end. Why she's ignoring you, that is. Or maybe she's simply afraid of facing what happened in the past. Something inside me believes that mother isn't that kind of person. Mitsuko-chan seemed to answer her own question. What do you mean? She has a strong sense of justice. An obsession, to put it another way. The idea that she would just keep running from something like this, like that, it doesn't match what we know about her. Hmm. But mother's clearly suffering so much, she doesn't have a choice but to run away. I know that's true, but what she wants. Forgiveness from Tomisama? Tomisama? 
On the contrary, I think it's punishment. Punishment? If I think about mother's personality, what mother did can't really be forgiven. Mother must believe that more than anyone else. So, even in her dreams, she wouldn't accept forgiveness. But I think she might at least want punishment. At least punishment? I couldn't quite grasp what she was talking about. But Ayaka-san nodded. I get it. Tomi-san died without ever confronting mother about her sin. That's probably the thing that was hardest for her. If she receives punishment, she can begin to atone. But the main person who could punish her isn't here anymore. She feels like she can't move forward or turn back. So, instead, she's caused a compromise in reality. Hmm. I can't tell if I understood that or not. But at least the headmistress didn't have such a loose ethical code that she would ignore the sin that lay out at in her heart. The sin was there, but nobody knew about it. That's why she could turn her eyes from reality. I wonder if God knows. Eh? What? What? The headmistress is a Christian. God never punished her for her crime. That's true. She was probably expecting some kind of Fun punishment. Anyway, I think I'll go ask Dad tomorrow for more details on how Mother and Tomi-san got along. Want to come with me, Ritsuko? I would prefer not. Really? Looking father in the eye right now would just make me angry. <laughs> I see. Into January 22nd. Sunday. The next day was Sunday, so we stopped by Papa Tori Moon Rock before it opened. Did Tomi know about it? To be honest, I'm not sure of that myself. He never said anything concrete about it. Right up to the end. So, I see. But I can't believe she didn't notice. She dropped some hints. Maybe she's just trying to be I can tell that Ms. Misako has been a great help to you. Things like that. That's true. I can't believe that she you could assume she just meant comfort comforting comforting me, but I don't know. I don't think that's all it meant. If she knew, then why did she go to her grave without telling anyone? 
I don't know. Maybe she knew she was dying and decided it wasn't worth stirring up trouble. In the end, Tomi became so passive. After all, she couldn't get out of bed. All she could do was wait for me to visit her. It really was cruel. It sounds like she probably didn't forgive you in her heart. Probably not. I seem to remember her saying things about Maseko like, I thought she was my best friend. Hey, Dad? Maseko said something last night. She said mother might be looking for punishment rather than forgiveness. What do you think of that? Punishment, eh? Maybe so. Your mother does have a strong sense of justice than most. And Tomi passed away without making things clear. Masenko is the kind of person who would seek out punishment rather than forgiveness. Dad, did you bring what I asked you for? Oh, yeah. His face lit up in recollection. Then he excused himself and left the table. What did you ask him for? Pictures of Tomi san. He came back immediately with a few photographs in hand. Here. Thanks. Peeked over her shoulder. They're all pictures of a young couple. Some of them looked to have been taken at a wedding as well. The people smiled radiantly. We really don't look much alike, do we? You and her? That's true. After all, she's completely un unrelated to you. That's true. But yesterday, when mother looked at me, she called me Tomi san. So I thought we might look alike. Now that you mention it, when Miseko was pregnant with you, she said some strange things. Something about the child inside her being Tomi san's reincarnation. The timing was about right, so. Her reincarnation? So it wouldn't have anything to do with her outward appearance? And back to the bus. Aiko san was still looking at the photos, even on the bus. We don't look the least bit alike. If I had seen these earlier, I probably would have realized something was off. Is this the first time you've seen them? It's like visiting her grave. I just wasn't really interested in knowing more. She turned her eyes back to the pictures. He whispered seriously. I wonder if Tomi-san 
had any connection to the student council. Student council? Why do you ask? There's something I've been wondering about. Mother's still dreaming, which means this might just work. Huh? Hey, Masaya-kun, would you mind coming with me tomorrow to investigate something? Sure, but what is it? I want to know who else was in Vincent's student council when mother was young. Vincent should have proper records of those things. Huh? What's the point of investigating that? I'll explain tomorrow. And to the 23rd, Monday. It's been a long time since we were in this classroom. We found what we were looking for in the dusty record room and checked them out in the classroom, which was empty after school. They really do keep detailed records, don't they? Well, the school does pride itself on its history. They have the members listed for them for the White Lily Society, Red Rose Society, and Student Council every year. They even have the Student Council presidential candidates listed. Most all of them were the leaders of one society or the other. We knew the headmistress's age, so it was an easy matter to find the right document. Oh, here it is. Oh, this is interesting. Huh? In my mother's year, there were three candidates for student council president. Three? So someone who wasn't a, a, a society leader? So, Mora, meet it. Yeah, here, look! I looked at the place where she was pointing. There was, uh, there were Kira Mikado, Misako, Ano Dera Tomi, and one other person I didn't recognize. Wow, Tomi-san and the headmistress competed? And here's something else that's interesting. Mother and Tomi-san? Tomi-san? We're both in the White Lily Society. Huh? Mother was the society leader. In other words, even though it should have been between Mother and the Red Rose Society leader? Tomi-san interposed herself? Can you do that? Well, any student can put themselves in the running. It's simply tradition that nobody but the society heads run. But there's clearly some friction here. Two white only society members going in into the election? Yeah, they might have been best friends, but I suppose they were rivals too. I guess neither of them wanted to lose. So, who won? Let me see. Oh, it was Tomisa. She won even though she wasn't the society leader? That's pretty amazing. Yes, it really is amazing. I wonder if that was the first time. Vincent really does hate change, after all. So Tomisa must have been pretty popular, right? But despite that, she wasn't elected society leader. Yakusan tilted her head. Masaya-kun, do you know how association leaders are picked? 
don't think she was there on. Lisa Clown said she was elected by a vote, taken by the society members, I remember. Oh, of course, at the time. It was because all the members had defaulted. Yes! Girls judge each other very harshly, you know. The student council president and society leaders, too, are people whom everyone respects. When Mother was made society leader, she was probably the most popular of the two of them. But things changed after a year had passed. I wonder why. You think something happened to them to make them dislike her? It could be jealousy. Jealousy? Maybe she exchanged rosaries with someone popular at Tim's Day Confession. Huh, I see. I guess there's no way to, to confirm it now, but that might have been what caused them to fight over the student council presidency. In which case, it's perfect! What is? That's right, she hadn't explained to me what we were looking for yet. I have a little plan! Mitsuka and I will come by again tonight, so I'll explain it then! I'm not sure if this will work out or not, but... I was thinking I'd play Tomi-san for a little while. Kawari? Player? Player? Why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? So I can take Mother to task for, for her. Dad said that Tomi-san died without saying anything about their affair, which means someone else needs to do it. Demo, but I don't think she'd confuse you for Tomi-san. So? Really? But mother made up the fiction in her mind that I was her daughter? Oh. Of course, it would seem strange to anyone else, but the headmistress still hadn't opened her eyes. So, if I act as her proxy, it would have more impact than a simple mother daughter relationship. Act as her proxy? Dad said that when mother was pregnant with me, she talked about how I was Tomi san's reincarnation, or something like that. And then, there was what she said when she recovered from her anemia. Mother clearly, clearly sees me as Tomi-san, somehow. That's why I did a little digging this afternoon. I was wondering if Tomi-san might have run for student council president. What does that have to do with anything? If she had, it would fit perfectly with what's going on now. That would make things really easy. Ah, oh, I see. I explained things to Ritsuko chan. As it turns out, she did run, and she was elected student council president, too. 
本当は離婚をできればよかったんだけどねでも3年生にそれはできないし I was hoping I could run but third year students aren't allowed だから我が回答を精一杯サポートしてできる限りアリシヒのトミエさんを彷彿とさせてみるわ So I'm going to, to support her society as much as I can do all I can to remind her of Tomi-san back in those days 計画は分かったけどサポートって I understand the plan but support how? 辻立ちとかねあれ別に立候補者しかしてはいけないということもないんでしょ Make speeches and stuff There's no rule stating that only candidates can do it, right? まあそうだけどでも本当にするの姉さんが Well, that is true But you're really going to do it? You? <laughs> あら何かしらその反応は What kind of reaction is that? Well, I just can't imagine it. Oh, I see. The truth is, I felt the same way. Yaga-san could be a real fraidy cat sometimes. The way she was hesitant to participate in Tim's day confession was an exam one example of that. Fair enough. Fair enough. To be honest, I know it's out of character for me to get up in front of everyone, but... But if I'm going to do something to help Mother, this might be my last chance. Which means, I want to do everything I can! Right. What do you think about it, Masaya-kun? Hmm, I think the plan itself is fine. But are you okay with that, Ayaka-san? Hmm? Hmm? What do you mean? Whether you pretend to be Tomisa's daughter, or pretend to be her, that's not really what you want, so... It sounds like you're just putting on another mask. And that's... I just... It's hard to express. The point was, I didn't like it. After having Yakasan so close to being honest, she was going to regress. But she spoke immediately. This is different from that. Okay. I couldn't bring myself to fight her anymore. Then I'll help out too. Thanks. But there's really not much you can, can help with. So just watch over me, okay? Roger. And to the 24th. I knew when we skipped lunch and headed right for the headmistress's office. How can I help you? She had been so meek back when she fell, but now her gaze was cold once more. Mother, you know I think you've done something immoral, don't you? That again? Please, enough! No, I won't stop. If you don't face your sin now, when will you face it, Mother? Or have you received your punishment from God? Oh, God? Don't you dare bring his name into this. It's written in John chapter 9. That judgment is only for God to give. I don't need to hear your Bible quotes. I doubt you have then. So you must still be suffering. That's why. 
I'm going to punish you by proxy, mother. You... Such blasphemy! You presume to... Of course. I don't mean in place of God. I mean in place of my mother. What? I'm Tomi-san's daughter, remember? A daughter settling her mother's unfinished business? There's nothing strange about that, is there? Head <laughs> Fisher's mouth flopped helplessly as she attempted to speak. Mother, Mother, no. I suppose I should call you this. Sako-san. You have done something wrong. What? What an insolent thing to say. I... I... Well, I think that's enough for today. Nakasan stepped away lightly, leaving the headmistress with her wind taken out of her. You know how I've behaved up until now? I've been too ashamed to express my opinions to others. Up until now? I've been wearing the mask of a clown. I swear to myself that I would never do that sort of thing again, but you might not believe me. And so, I'm going to use all my power to ensure that Risi is instated as student council president. Your power? Sister? You, don't interrupt. Ah, yes. <clears throat> as far as I can tell, Tomi-san was elected student council president despite not being a society leader. You're surprisingly well informed. I've been investigating. I wanted to show what I can do, like she did back then. That way, you can't possibly ignore me. Isn't that right? Do as you wish. I've already forgotten what happened back then. You liar. You're completely obsessed with the past. I... And I'm going to cut you free of those thick, rusty chains that bind you. Sako-chan? Masako-san? Stop that! The headmistress has clapped her hands over her ears, and was dumbstruck by the uncommon behavior. When you call me by my name, it makes me feel so strange. Salutations, then. We'll see each other again. On the day of the grand fest. Okay then, we're getting into the real deal now. As we left the room, Hanka-san pumped her arm slightly. Ritsuko, please don't hate me if you lose. 
もしも今から逆転できたとしたら確かに姉さんの力ということになるのかもしれない Right I know what I said before But if the White Lily Society turns things around I'll know that it was probably because of your power The White Lily Society support still sh showed no signs of increasing The grand vote was the 18th of next month The ca campaign was in the second half already well, I think I really shock I'll really shock people. They'll be all what? Another Kitamid Kato is doing speeches? Do your best. I'll be rooting for you. Not as your rival in the Red Rose Society, but as your little sister. <laughs> Thank you. Every day after that, Yakuza stood out on the cold campaigning for school reform. Naturally, she seemed very nervous during the first time speaking in front of people. By contrast, Riza-san was calm and collected from the start. But gradually, she found her way. The most, the most important thing was that she was speaking from the heart. Part of why I noticed it, of course, was because I knew their family circumstances. But the audience listened seriously, and they didn't seem to take it too badly at all. However, the headmistress must have felt concerned about it, because she came to every speech watching Hayaka-san from a distance. This time, the chairwoman was beside her. Ayaka-san has certainly changed. To be honest, I never expect, expected to see her so passionate about anything. Masaya-kun to Sousi Sousai no naka ni natta koto ga I suppose falling in love with Messiah's Khan was the best thing that ever happened to her. When she acts this way, she really is. Just like Tomi san. Tomi? Tomi? So, yeba. That's right. You mentioned Tomi before. What happened to her? Nothing. In school, you were always together. Tell me, was your best friend back in your school days? Yeah. Wasn't she? You were always together. I still remember. Were we really? What? Sometimes, I wonder. Tomasan and I really were friends at all. Do you think that you weren't? I. I. Seiko's voice trembled uncertainly. She had always been very restrained, but lately. She had been letting more to come to the surface. I betrayed her. Betrayed Tomi-san. Terribly. I know. I knew about this all along. Seiko was shocked by that. She stared down at the chairwoman's petite potty. Well, 
相談されたのですよ<笑>彼女のご主人とあなたが浮気をしていると And he never told her why? Oh well The statue too? The statue? The statue? The statue of limitations has expired So I suppose I can tell you She spoke to me about you and her husband's affair. <sighs> so, she did know about it. Tomie-san, what did Tomie-san say? Madam Chairwoman? What good would it do to know at this late date? What good? If she had survived, there might be a point to it. But Tommy passed away almost 20 years ago. What good would it do to pass on words that someone said so very long ago? So, so that's... That's... Would you feel better if she said that she forgave you? What if she said she still hated you? It's in the past now, Misako. I think it would be better to face the present than to remain tortured. But the past. Yes, someone had said something like that to her very recently. But who could it have been? It appears to be over. A sound of applause brought Miss Seiko back to reality. The students were applauding fervently. Hyaka had always been seen as an outsider. Seiko never thought a day would come when she would be accepted by the students like this. She is formidable, but no matter what happens here, Hyaka will graduate soon, or the Masai-kun stays here. Or not has nothing to do with her. Why then is she pouring her heart into school reform? Madam Headmistress, do you know the reason? I do not. Seiko's face twisted as if in pain. I... In the end, I'm finding that I don't know anything about Ayaka-san. I see. I never... Try to know anything. For so <laughs> Wow. Kind of feel sorry for you. For so long. Yaka and I. Ima kara de moso kuari masen yo. Nani shiro. Oyako wa shinu made. Oyako nano deskara. It's not too late to start. You'll remain mother and daughter for the rest of your lives. Seiko closed her eyes tightly. 
and shook her head back and forth like a child. All the while, the thought ran through her mind. All this time, I've been turning my eyes away from the truth. Into February 17th, wow. Just like, almost three weeks into the future. One day away from the Grand Vote. Phew! Stretching yourself like this? Really is exhausting! Yakuza unrolled her neck around, as if working out knots in her shoulders. The reaction was amazing, though. If things do turn around, I'll know we owe it mostly to Ayaka-sama. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. They really were shocked, weren't they? Seeing you act so passionately about something? It's just expectations. I'm nowhere near you, say. But she's had the weight of everyone's expectations from the start. Either way, the candidate cannot conduct an election campaign by herself. I have no complaints at all. As long as you win. As long as you win, anyway. Yes. This is a change of subject, but... Would Rose Sen and Kaori san be your mother, you say? Yes. What about her? Did you know that our mother's our mother was friends with Kaori san during her school days? With the headmistress? I didn't. Risa san seemed taken off guard by the subject. What is the headmistress's first name by chance? Misako? Misako? Ah. Ah, then they might have been close. My mother says that name quite often. But what about it? Let me ask you one more thing before I explain. Thou. You might not actually know. Do you think Kaori-san and Mother exchanged rosaries? Attempts to confession, you mean? So. Yes. Probably. Misa nodded, then spoke up, as if making an, an excuse. My mother loves talking about the past. That's why... Uh... Why, I know. I see. So it's just as I thought. She was your mother. So, I assume Kiyori-san was quite popular back in school? Huh, it appears that she was. Hmm, I see. So that's why Mother lost the grand vote. I wonder if the reason Tomi-san ran for president was because of a sort of triangle between them. What? Excuse me, everyone. Ayaka-san looked around at everyone, except for Risei-san. 
There's something I need to talk about with just the four of us. Would you mind leaving us alone for a minute? Oh, it sees. Once the others had left, Nayaka san explained the whole situation. I can't believe it. That's why I wanted to ask for your help in this one thing. You think you can? Yes, of course. I'll do anything that I can. Thanks. Ayaka-sama, you said before that you've come to want school reform for yourself. Is that the reason why? Yeah, I guess so. Now, about tomorrow. And to the grand vote. The next day. After the grand vote, Ayaka-san visited the headmistress to speak to her. So did we win the grand vote? Oh well. We'll probably find out later. I think I've earned the right to speak to you. Don't you think, Mother? リセは、それ is known as Sole de Eko. It just shows that her influence was stronger in the end. Hey, ever since Ayaka-san started helping, support for the White Clothing Society clearly started going up. I was about to interject when Ayaka-san stopped me with a hand. Sole de that phrase means a lot to you, doesn't it? What are you suggesting? Nothing in particular. I wish I could have just blamed you as your daughter. But I guess that couldn't have saved you in the end. The headmistress shook her head, looking somehow exhausted. I... I'm finished. Finished? With what? Tomie-san died a long... died long ago. No matter what happens now, my sin. <laughs> Ayakasan was always detached when speaking to the headmistress, but now her expression was sev severe. <laughs> what do you mean? You're finished? <laughs> then, what am I supposed to do? Ayakasan. Ayakasan. I've always, always. She glared at the headmistress, her eyes red. The headmistress looked down as to avoid meeting her gaze. Ayaka sounds worked really hard. Now, no matter what you say, the result of the grand vote wasn't just because of Rise san. Why can't you accept that Ayaka san worked really hard? She wasn't doing this to help the school out of its financial problems. She did it to make you open your eyes. Let it go, Masaya-kun. She pulled my hand back, then wiped out the corner of her eye. Let's just go. Are you sure? I looked into Ayaka-san's eyes in concern. It would be best if we could just settle things here, but... Ayaka-san seemed to sympathize, but... Nodded firmly nonetheless. She then pulled me by the hand out of the room. Yakasan let out a breath, as if she had been holding it all that time. 
局一芝居打たないといけないことになっちゃったわね I guess we have to go with our little performance I was worried again I didn't want Anyaka Sun to have to play a role anymore ま、うまくいくかどうかわからないけど私もリセも演技なんかできないもの Well, I don't know how well it will go Risa and I aren't actors after all. Yeah. Don't be like that. Yakasun smiled and patted my cheek lightly. This will be the first and last time. And it's for my sake, too. Earlier, she had glared at the headmistress red eyed. I've always, always. I knew what she was going to say after that. That was how Ayaka san really felt. Then, let's do it the way we discussed last night. Right. Whoa. It's music. Masiko received an email from an unknown sender and came to the cathedral that night. The room was dark. On the light was the starlight streaming in from the outside. Maybe there was no one there? But that couldn't be. Masako walked silently up the aisle. Her footsteps resounded louder than usual. As she walked, she felt like she was slipping into her own past. Slipping into the body of a beautiful young maiden who knew nothing of the world and its hardships. It was a ridic uh, ridiculous thought. For a woman her age. But... It was also true that Vincent had a mysterious power to keep people locked in one state indefinitely. So much so that no matter how many years passed since graduation, the Vincent's of memory had a hold on her. She had thought there was no light inside, but there was actually a candle on the altar. Masako felt herself drawn further and further into the past, a chanting all end of her second year. That was her fondest memory of her school days. She could still barely believe it. Kaori-sama, the most popular girl in school, regarded by all as Soleil de Cole. She never even dreamed that such a person would choose her. <gasps> she straightened up like a shot. Kaori-sama! Kaori-sama! <laughs> And kind of look creepy, but okay. It's okay. Masako san. In the old days, it went without saying, but now, the sound of her first name had a foreign ring in her ears. Tomi san. Tomi san. You have always fled from your sin. Tried to hide it. Just as man in the Garden of Eden tried to hide from the eyes of God. Misako-san, you betrayed your best friend. Just as man betrayed God in the Garden of Eden. Those who sin must receive punishment. I can never forgive you, Misako-san. Misako-san, and so, Masako san, the world that you live in now cannot hold. The world I live in now? Masako san is more than as men was chased from Eden, till that dust returns to dust. Masako-san, you cannot remain in paradise. 
そうして現実に向き合わなければならない。You must leave it and face the truth. Do you understand? Did she collapse? I was watching everything from the shadows. So they like to creep. The <laughs> headmistress fell to her knees suddenly, crying silently. Please. Please. Stop. For a minute, I thought she had opened her eyes. But the next words out of her mouth surprised me. Please. Put an end to this farce. So she figured it out. But she was still crying violently. When Ayakasan, the master of performance, didn't seem to know how to react. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ayakasan. Mother. I've put you through so many awful things. What? Treating you like a stranger. Forcing you to wear a mask again. Did Headmistress realize that too? It's true that I... I've been dreaming for so long. I chose to remain... Trapped... In one place. And Ayaka-san, with nowhere else to go, you learned to play the clown, to protect yourself. Ayaka-san looked at the headmistress with such a sorrowful expression, she almost appeared to be a different person from before. You really are the child that grew inside me, that I brought into this world. I really am. Sorry. How long have you known? When I woke up in my room and realized that I was crying, I remembered the sight of the headmistress there, staring dumbfounded at the wetness on her fingers. Perhaps in that moment, she had re remembered everything. Why? Why didn't you say anything sooner? I couldn't. Because now, it's too late to be your mother. How long have you been here, Ritsuko? Yes. It's never too late, mother. We're a family. It's never too late to start over. 
Hatsuko-chan patted Ayakasan on the back lightly. At her urging, Ayakasan walk walked up to the headmistress. Tears were streaming down her face. <laughs> Do you think I won't forgive you? What I was saying before! Those were Tomi-san's lines! I... I don't feel the same way! I've always... Always... Probably too high. Oh well. And she does have a bun. Oh. <laughs> and this is a different song in the background. They look like the end of a Disney movie or something, but oh well. On to the story. The tears continue to flow. As if to wash all the all of the sediment that had collected in their hearts. All that had built up over those long years was now flowing out of them. Such beautiful tears. I couldn't help but be moved. But feel moved. In the end. Chapter twenty five. Um, chapter twenty six. Of course, it just says the final chapter for 26 and two tomorrow. And just two days later. You know, graduation's in his Well, bye guys. I'm Celestia Shadows. And thanks for watching Princess of Angel. Next time, I'll finish Ayaka's route finally. Been like months on her route but college got in the way but that's okay now I'm so close so thank you for watching again guys but bye for now <laughs>